Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today we're going to mess with our Nexus 7. Yeah, today you'll know how to install Ubuntu Touch. Welcome to Know How, the show where we show how to do cool things. I'm Leo Laporte. This is Aya Zakta, our Know How guy. Mr. Know How, we call him. Yeah, that's what they call me around the office. It's on my coffee cup, too. This one I, I didn't think we'd be doing for a while. Now, we Nexus 7, of course, is that great 7-inch tablet Google makes. It's completely hackable. It's mm -hmm. wide open. But you're doing something a little interesting, too. I, I think it's great as it is with Jelly Bean. But Ubuntu has put out a new touch operating system. Yeah, this just came out last week. It's a developer edition. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to take Ubuntu Touch, which is a specialized version of Ubuntu set up for tablets and phones. We're going to put it on our Nexus 7. Now, a big warning, this thing is not ready for prime time just yet. This is meant for developers. And this way, when you're developing apps for it, if you want to get a feel for it, that's really what this, this operating system is for. Because... It's a preview. It's really just a preview. Absolutely. Yeah. But the thing is, all the stuff that we're going to show you, everything you're going to know how to install the actual operating system, that's likely not going to change. So as this operating system gets better, you'll know how to do this for the future. Very cool. Well, where do we start? I mean, uh, do we have to root this or anything like that? Well, there's a first, make sure you get all your materials in line. You're okay. going to definitely need a Linux machine. We have here Ubuntu 12 point something or other. I forget which version it is at this well, point. We should mention the Nexus 7 running Android is actually running Linux. It's the That's Android flavor of Linux. So this is really just a different version of Linux, Ubuntu Linux. So it shouldn't be too difficult to get this working. It's, it's actually not that difficult. Yeah. You're also going to need about 30 minutes of time because it does take a bit of time to do this. This can break your device. Ubuntu on its wiki says this very boldly. Okay, something could go wrong. We haven't had that in our experience, but be that's aware just, of that. That's just lawyer talk. They want to make sure they're CYA, covering their... Um, their assets. Assets. Because they're a foundation. And yes. on top of that, you got to have a compatible device. Right now, it only works on the Nexus 4, 7, 10, and the Galaxy Nexus, although I've read. You've been some other people have been able to get it on other Samsung devices. But if you want this to work out of the gate, have one of these devices. So gather our materials. Obviously, we have a Nexus 7 here. Where, where do we get the software? The software is available for free at Ubuntu.com. I will have all the instructions, a link on the show notes. And actually, because we wanted a controlled environment when we were installing this operating system, because it does take a while, we went into the lab to mess with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to install Ubuntu Touch onto this Nexus 7. And thanks to the great instructions at Ubuntu.com, it's all laid out for you. So what we're going to do is do some simple terminal stuff. If you're afraid of terminal, don't be. This works really well. So what we're going to do is go to our Ubuntu machine to do all this because that is a presupposition of this project. That's right, I said presupposition. So we're going to go over here. We're going to look at our directions. We're going to look at flashing the device. So what we need to do is get some repositories for Ubuntu. We're just going to take this line, sudo add apt repository, ppa phablet dash team slash tools. We're going to copy that. And we're just going to paste that into terminal. Now you could type this out if you want to. It's not that big a deal. And it's going to ask for a password. Put in our password because we're doing sudo. Let's see. More info, press enter to continue. We always want to continue. Now, if you don't know anything about terminal, I wouldn't worry about this. You just go ahead and follow the directions. When you see things are OK, like right there, just continue to do what you're doing. Then what you're going to do is, because our repository is available, we can go to the next step. If it's not, there are other steps you can use. We're going to update this. Make sure you have it properly done. We're going to get an update, and we're getting an update right now. So you can see that the repository is getting updated. You're going to see a whole bunch of things flying by. Don't worry about reading any of this. It's pretty, pretty fast anyway. There's no way. I don't, think, I don't think you can read this that fast unless you become a very good speed reader. Oh, look, it's done already. Let's see, we have an error, stable, and release. The following sign, sign, what does it say? Signatures can be verified. OK, no problem. We'll go to the next one. We'll cut and paste this. Do we want to continue? New package is going to be installed. Wire N, type Y. We wait again. 
a lot of this install is waiting for things. It's pretty simple. Okay, so now we're ready for the next step. What we've got to do is we've got to unlock our device. So what we're going to do is take our Nexus 7. So now we're going to mess with our actual tablet and we're going to follow these steps accordingly. What we're going to do is we're going to power down the device. Power on the device by holding the power button and the volume up and down buttons at the same time. So on the side here we have our buttons. So we're going to try to do that all at once. Excuse my fingers because this is kind of a strange one. I'm going to hold down the volume buttons together first. And then hold down the power button. And you'll see that we have an Android that looks like it's on an operating table. That's a good thing. Now we're going to plug the device into a computer via the USB cable. We're just following instructions, folks. It's pretty, pretty easy. On our computer, we're going to open up another terminal, Control alt t and we're going to type the following. We're going to do sudo fastboot oem unlock. I'm just going to copy and paste this because when you're doing terminal commands, you want to make sure that they are exactly correct. It's going to ask for your password because it's sudo. And the bootloader is already unlocked because we did this before. If you hadn't done this, it would unlock the bootloader for you. So you can go ahead and then put on a new uh, operating system. So we're booting our, our Nexus. If you can see this little unlock on our Nexus screen when we're starting up, that's because the bootloader is unlocked. So that's going to boot up and we're going to go into step three. After this is, this is actually set up, what we're going to do is enable USB debugging of the device. That allows us to tell our Nexus 7 what we want it to via this USB cable. And that's how we're going to end up installing Ubuntu Touch. Our Nexus 7, we had to go ahead and do the original setup. What we're going to do is enable USB debugging by going to settings, then go to about tablet. And then we're going to find the build number which is down here. It says tap it seven times to see the developer options. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You are now a developer. I don't know if you can see that's really tiny, but now you're going to have options that you didn't have originally. And we'll have a new option here. It says developer options in our settings. I'm going to click that. And what we're going to do is we're going to enable USB debugging right here, this little check mark. It says allow USB debugging. And now we have a check mark next to our USB debugging. So now we can actually control our machine here with our computer. The next part is going to depend on what version of Android we have. We have 4.2.2. So now we've got to add another terminal command, ADB kill server and ADB start server. And now a screen shows up, a little pop-up shows up on our device saying allow USB debugging. It wants to be attached to this workstation we have down there. We're going to say always allow from this computer because we want our machine to be able to install Ubuntu Touch on our Nexus 7. Hit OK. Now what we got to do is kind of install Ubuntu to this device because now we're ready to start installing. Okay. So from terminal, we're going to copy this command, phablet hyphen flash and then dash B. What does it mean? I don't know. Okay, so now it's going to ask us a whole bunch of stuff. I'm sure you're reading this as I'm reading this very quickly. I'm going to hit yes. It's actually telling you that this could brick your device. This is a developer edition. It's not necessarily something that you're going to use on a day-to-day -day basis just yet. But we're going to accept it anyway because in the future, this is probably going to be really cool. So right now you can see that a couple of these messages are going by saying the file is already retrieved because we were doing this previously on another install. So nothing to do. We're going to keep going by and watch all of these fun terminal commands go flying by as we're waiting. Now you saw they said the file is already retrieved, nothing to do. Now when you are installing this the first time, you'll see a progress meter go from right to left or left to right, excuse me, and it'll tell you something's happening. When you're at this final stage, pushing to SD card auto deploy dot zip down here, progress meters disappear. So you might go, is anything happening? Did it freeze? What's going on? Your Android device doesn't tell you anything and your terminal's not telling you anything. In my experience, it took eight minutes for this install to happen the first time. So what you do is you simply walk away, maybe get a cup of coffee, take a jog, do whatever you want, because you don't want to mess with your terminal or your device while this is going on. Now that was a long wait. Actually, I'm sure we, since we've recorded it, we actually know how long this has been, but it feels like an eternity, I gotta say. So on our Nexus, we have our open Android there, and it says the device needs to be unlocked for the following to work on the terminal. So we're gonna type in our password. Now it's sending. Racing system, okay, sending system. That was such a long pause. Now you can see on the terminal, slowly, we're getting some things changing. It says, okay, writing system. Okay, writing boot, downloading boot image, 
once completed the device should reboot into Ubuntu. So right now, we're gonna just do nothing for a little bit. If we take a look at the Nexus, things are happening. You can see an Android and you're seeing inside of his belly some kind of awesomeness. This is an actual normal screen that you see when you're actually installing or updating your Android. What's going on here is we're gonna have Ubuntu Touch running on this once this is done. You can see the little progress bar, it's going, it's exciting. So now on our Nexus 7, we have Ubuntu running, Ubuntu Touch, the developer edition. It's not gonna be super powerful, but let's mess with that in a second. All right, so we've got, we finally- We did it. Yeah, so we've got it, it's- So, oh, total time, I know we edited that. How much did it take? That took about 30 something minutes. And okay. when it was actually being pushed to the device, it took at least 10 minutes. So, I, so most of the time is getting the software onto the device. Yeah, that was a lot of time. Like I mentioned in the video, there's, there's no progress meter. So if right. you, like I tell you- Be patient. I tried it with the uh, virtual machine. <laughs> virtual machine, I, try, I quit after 20 minutes. It waited and waited. It, that didn't work. I tried it with a live version of Ubuntu. That didn't if work. Every, anybody's ever uh, put, rooted an a Android device and put a new ROM on it, it's very much the same process. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, it's identical. The only difference here is the ROM isn't a Cyanogen mod. It's Ubuntu. Although, I understand they actually use some of the code of Cyanogen yeah, mod to make folks, this work. And our Google Plus community was telling us, are telling us about the fact that this effectively is a skinned version of Cyanogen mod. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, we can actually take a look at it now because we have it running on the Nexus That's 7. The, to me, this is the most interesting thing is I've wanted to play with Ubuntu Touch, now so here it is. See right away that the We've time seen the demo videos. Is set, and I, it's all gesture based. So when you go from the left right. side, oh, you get so this cool. dock just like you do with Ubuntu regular. And then if I went into this way, there's no actual, it didn't say slide to unlock or anything. So I had to like pay you attention. You have to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. you pull away. And you have these sample applications and things. So this is now the desktop. You slide that in from from that the left side or right side there. That's right. And then so we've got. And what's that? We've got more applications. That's the app drawer. Okay. We have a lot more videos. Pretty much you can That's go from video. left to right. I see. All right. And so it's really undeveloped right now. You can there are a couple applications. Here's calculator. Watch this. It doesn't do anything yet. Oh. Because the most of this is for developers. So you understand how to implement when you're putting your apps together. So that's just really a JPEG, probably, of a calculator. It's not even Pi. They're so close. The Twitter application <laughs> does work. That works good. Links don't necessarily work. The browser works, but you can't pinch and zoom or click links. So it's very, very unfinished. And like I mentioned, it's meant for developers. This is just the start of this. So here's the browser. There's Twit. You can see I can't really So this probably with it. isn't something you'd want to do to your nice Nexus 7. Uh, so we did it for you. Well, unless you're gonna, <laughs> unless you're gonna become a developer for Ubuntu yeah, Touch, then you have to. I mean, you but do you have to be running Ubuntu Touch to develop for it? Oh, I don't. I mean, if you want to see how it I is, guess in, if you in, want to try it in that situation, yeah. yeah. But what I want to do, though, since we've got to try out Ubuntu Touch, and we're like, hey, our Nexus Seven had more functionality before, we can restore it back. So that's what oh, I want to do right now. Oh, that's the good news. Yeah. So let's. It's let's, not a one-way trip. Oh no, we can go backwards. What I'm going to have to do is hook up. My, uh, my does Wi-Fi work on it? Wi-Fi does work on okay. this right now. The camera, I've had, I've had issues with the camera on yeah. the Nexus 7. Although on the 4, I hear it works fine. On the 10, I've heard it works fine. But Bear not, says you have to have Ubuntu Quantel to develop with. And I presume that that's software you run on a desktop, Bear. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get... So each particular device has firmware, obviously. We picked up the firmware for our, our devices of the Nexus 7 Wi-Fi. So we've, we've already downloaded that. That's this, uh, if you look at my, t my screen here, you can see that it's this Nakasi JDQ39, easy for me to say. So we, all you gotta do, this only, it's pretty simple. So it's about a 300 megabyte file, takes a bit to download. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do a, a terminal command, ADB reboot bootloader. What is, do you know what ADB means? Yeah, ADB is the program that you use to do all of this stuff. It allows you to, um, to command the, uh, it's it's running on, as you can see, it's running on the Nexus and allows you to command the Nexus over the serial port, over the USB port. And right now, you can see that something There's has a happened. There's a variety of switches for copying files over, things like that. Cool. So right now, the Nexus is ready to, to get no, more instructions. So what we're going to do is we are going to jump to a, a command, sudo, and in our, in our extracted files here, we have this flash-all.sh. I'm just going to drag and drop this right into the terminal. If you remember the path, you can go ahead and do that. You just hit enter, make sure the terminal's selected. Tom Z says it stands for Android Debug Bridge, and that's exactly what it is, a bridge from Android to your desktop via USB. So pretty much this is what you have to do to get Android back on there. It's gonna be a stock version of it. That's the original firmware 4.2. Did you have to sell, save the ROM before you did the, do this or you get the ROM from somewhere else? Well, I got the ROM from Google. So right. I mean, the, the, You could probably save your own Nexus 7 ROM out yeah, that's something with ADB I'll, and then do it. That is something yeah. I wanna do. I wanna back yeah. up my, all my settings and everything because what I'm go going to have here is an absolute stock version of right. it. 
So it's going to go ahead and continue. So it's saying fail to... That's why, by the way, you tap that seven times to put yourself in developer mode. You're turning on the ADB server so that you can talk to it over serial port. So that's going to take some time. And before you know it, it's going to be running Android again. It's a pretty basic thing. But it takes about 10 minutes for it to load. Okay. Because you're right into this, this flash. Yeah, it takes a while. Cool. So we'll mess with that later. I'll show you my Nexus running you know, again. It's just cool to see, uh, frankly, uh, to see the uh, Ubuntu Touch running. It's very cool. So you need the, if you want to develop for it, you're going to need the latest version of Ubuntu running on your desktop or your laptop computer. But it is handy to have a Nexus 7 or a Nexus 4 that you can run it on and see what you're doing. There we go. Every cool. now and then you run into an issue, just give it another go. I just did, did it. Did it again. crash? Uh, the, the terminal says it was failing some things. Yeah. So I just redid it and it's still loading. So that's going to go ahead. But while we're doing that, I should give some big thanks to all our folks at the Google Plus community we have going right now. There's over 1,400 of you guys in there right now. You guys are asking questions, coming up with show ideas, and my favorite thing is you guys are helping out each other. When there's all kinds of questions of how can I control exactly what my friends see on, on my router, like open DNS questions actually being solved right on the community. It's like an old school forum. I'm really loving that. One little tip from Bear, don't try to do this on the LTE version, the 3G version. You'll bust your Nexus 7. It's Wi-Fi version oh, only. Wow. Okay, I'm not messing. Very important. <laughs> I do not have an LTE version or. That. Always when you're doing this kind of stuff, follow the instructions carefully, and it'll say in the instructions, warning, beware. This is only for this version. Yeah, on the top of the, like I said before, it said on the top, this might break your device. Yeah. So this is for developers. It's less likely to do so if you follow the instructions exactly. <laughs> well, we're going to spotlight somebody from Google Plus. We got a uh, message from Mark Klein. He said he loved the show on the Raspberry Pi and XBMC. I've had it running on my Pi for a few weeks now, Neat. and I've been watching lots of programming through the Twit add-on. One feature you didn't mention that I love is the ability to use your TV remote to navigate the interface using CEC. That's Consumer Electronics Control over the HDMI cable. Of course, it only works if your TV supports CEC. I do use an iOS app sometimes, but really like controlling XBMC the same way I control my TV slash DVD player. Neato. That's a really cool feature that's available. There's so many things that, I mean, by doing or playing with uh, your Raspberry Pi, we actually experience this because it's not part of my regular routine right now. But it's good to know you can do CEC. And CEC is a whole interesting protocol where you can control everything through your TV or receiver through the HDMI cable. Also, on the Plus community, I want to mention something. A lot of guys ask me, what's coming up on the show? Leo asked me, what are we going to do on the show? Like, That's because I, I never visit the Plus community. It's all there. Put up a post this week. It actually yeah. says upcoming episodes. Ubuntu DIY and Nexus Sonos. 7. Next week, we're going to be doing a multi-room DIY, DIY Sonos. After Not that, using Sonos gear. Absolutely. Sonos-like experience. We're going to try to replicate that as best we can. <laughs> That's going to be fun, because I've spent a lot of money on Sonos. I'd like to know how to do it without doing that. That's going to be a fun one. Expanding our wireless networks, a whole bunch of stuff. So if you've been wondering what's going on, what's coming up, it's available on Google+. Plus. What is the name of the Google Plus community? It's Twit Know How. Twit know -how. Uh, but if you okay. want to do a really quick way to do it, you write gplus.to slash twitkh. Twitkh. So you can get there, there it is. It's really simple. It's right. a great community. I really enjoy reading everything there. Let's see. So we've got our Android device. If you can see it right is now, is it back? It's restoring back oh, to there. God. Our Nexus logo. <laughs> Very happy that's working out because I need my Nexus back because I want to do some cool things with it. With I got my, my Nexus. DIY. Back. I Sonos. love the Nexus. It's a really good reason to, to get one, is so you can do this kind of thing. Yeah. So if you want to look at past episodes, we've got everything at twit.tv/kh. We've got show notes. We've got links to everything. So if you're like, hey, I want to make a Raspberry Pi Media Center. What, how do I do that? We'll have a bunch of instructions there, links to everything, and there's the uh, there's a screenshot. You can see like why XBMC. Everything is written out right there. You can watch it in HD. You can slow me down. You can rewind me if you want to. You can watch us in HD. All of that's available at twit.tv/kh. That's cool. Now that you know how to hack your Nexus 7, why don't you see it's back? Welcome, it says. Why don't you go out there and put Ubuntu Touch on your device, just like that. Thank you, Ayaz. We'll see you next time on Know How.